toothless bulldog, Tinubu's EFCC can't fight corruption. <laughs> wow. So, why do we say Tinubu's EFCC can't fight corruption? Is it that Tinubu himself is an accomplice of corruption, or that the EFCC and the new boss, Olukoyede, is also an accomplice of corruption? Well, let's dive into the details on this uh, excerpt. Allah Olukoyede, the chairman of the EFCC, um, recently appointed by Nigeria's new president, Bola Tinubu, is saying the right thing and making the right noises about fighting corruption in Nigeria. Recently, he struck a chord with me when he called for unexplained wealth legislation in Nigeria. The unexplained wealth laws are the most powerful tool for tackling corruption. As I wrote in a piece titled, Fighting Corruption, Nigeria Must Tackle Unexplained Wealth. Okay, that was in Vanguard, November 2022, November 22, 2021. Yet, despite my positive opinion of the new EFCC chairman, the stark reality is that the EFCC won't and can't make an iota of difference in stemming the inexorable, inexorable rise of corruption in Nigeria. The agency is so bedeviled that it has become part of the problem, not part of the solution. Right. Yeah, I can agree to some extent. Last year, I wrote a piece titled Corruption. EFCC is not fit for purpose. It's, it's time to scrap it. That was the Vanguard, June 18, 2023. In that article, I made three points. First, EFCC has now existed for 20 years since its creation in 2003, yet Nigeria remains one of the most corrupt countries in the world, still languishing at the bottom of the Transparency International Corruption uh, perception index ranked 150 out of 180 countries surveyed in 2022. Second, the EFCC is so politicized that every new president must appoint his own EFCC chairman. Third, virtually all EFCC chairmen since the agency's inception have been enmeshed in corruption allegations. Of course, there is the judiciary which tends to side with corrupt politicians by acquitting those charged with corruption purely on technicalities. How can the EFCC be effective in those circumstances? Unfortunately, those are the variant, uh, the invariant conditions under which a local EFCC operates. To make matters worse, the Tinubu government lacks credibility on the anti graft front. Earlier this week, Tinubu told the delegation of the Christian Association of Nigeria, we will continue to fight corruption. But how credible is that commitment when his government is littered with people with unexplained and inexplicable wealth? Hmm. Truth is, fighting corruption in the Tinubu government must start from within the government itself. And that goes beyond scapegoating, scapegoating small fries like Betaedu. Okay, it requires a surgical operation to drain the swamp. <laughs> Professor Wolesho Inter put it powerfully in his recent channels TV interview. He said the EFCC and the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, should be questioning former governors occupying critical positions in the Tinubu's uh, government now that they no longer have immunity. Are they answering questions from the EFCC? No. He's he now he asked Adam, ICPC, EFCC, what are you doing about them? What happened? We've been waiting. Indeed, we are still waiting. Exactly. So if you are not able to investigate or question former governors because they were in office and they had immunity, now that they have left offices and they, are, they no longer have immunity and they are still occupying key positions in Tinubu's government, what is EFCC waiting for before arraigning them? Hmm. Okay. Granted that it can't investigate a sitting president or governor because of their immunity, but why should a truly independent anti graft agency not be able to investigate anyone else without fear or favor? In 2022, the FBI launched a criminal investigation against President Biden's son, Hunter Biden, over allegations of tax crimes, drug use, and illegal purchase of a handgun. The FBI did not dodge the investigation 
because it involved the president's son. And President Biden did not stop the FBI from doing his job. So can't that happen? So can that happen in Nigeria? Absolutely not. Rather, the EFCC has historically been accused of being a political tool used by successive presidents to harass their political opponent or pressured to turn a blind eye to the corruption practices of their allies. Recently, opposition governors whose elections were validated by the Supreme Court lavished praise on Tinubu for not interfering in the APES court's verdict. The interference is that he could have interfered and that, that he probably interfered in other instances, such as perhaps the controversial Nasarawa state governorship case. Truth is, there are no real checks and balances in the governance of Nigeria. The president is too powerful and can manipulate any so-called independent body. For instance, although the EFCC can, in theory, prosecute corruption cases independently, it will not investigate or prosecute anyone if the president's body language says back off. After all, under President Buhari, the FCC often stopped someone in prominent uh, PDP politicians accused of corruption once they, they come to APC. Yes. Yes. Indeed, a former APC national chairman, Adam Oshomole, famously said, once you join APC, all your sins are forgiven. He said it in 2019 during the campaign uh, period. So, truth be told, political interference is the EFCC's uh, archives heal. Okay? Nothing proves this better than the fact that every new president must have his own EFCC chairman. In his book, Reclaiming the Jewel of Africa, Dr. Shegun Aganga, a former minister who wrote glowingly about Abdul Rashid Bawa, the former EFCC chairman, he said Bawa had demonstrated an informed or enlightened knowledge of the issue and how to deal with them. Adding Chairman Bawa is young, passionate about his job, vibrant, analytical, and full of right ideas that would take the EFCC into the 21st century. Yet, no sooner had Tinubu become president than that he suspended and incarcerated Bawa citing weighty allegations of abuse of office leveled against him. But if you expect the weighty allegations to lead to Bawa's conviction, forget it. The case will soon fizzle out. Tinubu needed to remove Bawa to bring in his own man. And look at there is Tinubu's uh, man. <laughs> Yet, besides political interference, the EFCC itself is corrupt. Okay, recently, Oluko Ede himself confirmed it. In his New Year message to the agency, he said, The craze and quest for gratification, bribes, and other compromises by some of our investigators are becoming too embarrassing. A senior lawyer, Kayode Ajulo San, responded by calling for a presidential task force to unmask corruption, uh, corrupt EFCC officials. Tell me, where is the hope for tackling corruption in Nigeria when the staff of EFCC, the anti graft agency, are themselves corrupt? <laughs> this is not a small one, no. not a joke at all. So those of us who bang on, bang on about corruption do so because of its corrosive political, economic, and social effects. Politically, corruption erodes democratic legitimacy. So if someone steals public funds and uses the loot to buy votes and win election, where is the legitimacy? Yeah. Economically, corruption drains a country's resources and hampers its uh, development. Socially, corruption breeds all evils. As someone aptly put it, corruption is the most incredible machine for manufacturing poverty. And of course, it is also a major cause of inequality, social discontent, insecurity, just name it and all. So Nigeria has industrial skill corruption, yet lacks the political will and institutional capacity to tackle it frontally. Successive governments play lip service to the war against corruption with a powerless EFCC. Nigeria faces a spike in klepto crazy. Wow. So what this excerpt is saying is that EFCC will never be able to fight uh, corruption to the root because 
normally we've seen that efcc is only interested in small thieves but the bigger ones goes free because they have the money to bribe themselves all through all the levels okay and now we have also seen that the president is so powerful that when any president that comes in will put his own efcc chairman and um, you know work with him no matter how good the previous one is they will be removed just like olushigo aganga the former nigerian minister wrote his book that praised uh, the former efcc chairman abdul rashid bawa to the high heavens but that did not stop Tinubu from removing him and putting weighty allegations on him and then putting his own man Olukoye there um, as the new FCC chairman. But even at that too, all the allegations put on Bawa did not lead to conviction of Bawa. Rather, Bawa has been set free and is gone home now. So with all of this put together, where uh, this writer has also put, uh, you know, the, the, what do they call it? The uh, social, economic and political impact of corruption in a, in, in a system like Nigeria. So with all of this that um, in place, but even the new EFC chairman in this New Year message to his people or New Year address has said that gratification and um, corruption and bribes has actually um, negatively impacted the efficiency and effectiveness of the EFCC investigators, meaning that EFCC investigators and staff are all corrupt because they collect bribe. So when you steal, you share part of your loot with the anti graft agencies and you are free. Coupled with the fact that judiciary will also always take side with the politicians. So when it is a small person, in just a matter of hours or days, case is concluded, the person is sentenced. But when it involves a politician, both the EFCC and the judiciary will play game with it. And before you know it, they will say the case lacks merits and they quash it. So it is obvious that EFCC obviously will not be able to fight corruption in Nigeria, especially on that Tinubu that a lot of his appointees are littered around this administration with corruption allegations on their neck. What an irony. And Tinubu is boasting that he's going to fight corruption to the root. He can't. So thank you for listening and let's have your comments.